ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to come to this blessed place this house dedicated to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our submission, our humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the expression of our submission and humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be able to express it, that itself is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we need to be eternally thankful for. On the Day of Judgment, the people who have lived their life in negligence and kufr, they would want to do such that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they will not be allowed to. With their whole being, they would want to bow down and prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will not be allowed to. So if Allah is allowing us to do sajda, and Allah is allowing us to come to his house, and Allah is allowing us to stand before him and bow before him, that is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be really thankful for. Salah is a pillar of Islam. It is something that is a manifestation of our belief in our hearts. Allah. <clears throat> Just like Salah is an expression of our humility and submission and Salah with Jama'ah, congregation, collective coming together is the expression of our submission and humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collectively Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also appointed one other faridah, one other incumbent responsibility upon people which everybody is required to do at least once in their lifetime and just like namaz and salah is a pillar of islam hajj is also a pillar of islam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ayah that i recited allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with a lot of mercy and a lot of love and affection said that it is as if it is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over people that they visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever they have the capacity at least once in their life and this is of course this does not benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this benefits the person himself because Allah becomes pleased with them with their this little effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised so many rewards for the person who leaves their family behind and leaves their house and their community behind and go as if they are a mujahid they are somebody who is striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave the comforts of their house and go to fulfill their responsibility Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that this is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over people whoever has the capacity what does capacity mean? it's very simple we should all ask ourselves do we have the money? Do we have the money to finance our journey of Hajj? Also, when we leave, if we are leaving somebody behind whose responsibility is upon our shoulders, if we are leaving our spouse behind, our children behind, then 
We should also make sure that while we are gone, they will be able to support themselves or we are able to provide or leave behind so much that they are able to take care of their basic needs. Also, a person should be able. So if somebody is not able to get there because of their bodily uh, any issues or because of their being some sort of restriction, for example, during COVID times, we saw that it was not allowed to go for Hajj. Or if there is some severe problem on the way which restricts people or puts their life into jeopardy, then in such situation, Hajj is not Farz. But if we ask ourselves, how much money do we have in our savings account? How much money do we have saved for some other reasons that is just lying there and we are not using it? That money and the security that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, that makes Hajj Farz for us right now. And when the time of Hajj comes, we have to prioritize it. Otherwise, our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that those who, number one, may Allah protect us, we are seeing more and more of such people who are totally, by matter of aqidah, by matter of belief, saying that this hajj is something that's not necessary, na'udzubillah, this hajj is something, na'udzubillah, uh, people say that this is a business of the government there and it's profitable for them and that. We don't care about it. Hajj has been going on for many hundreds and thousands of year, years, a thousand years before uh, the current people who are running the Haramain. So therefore, Hajj is Hajj. It does not matter who is controlling the affairs of Haramain. We have differences with them, those differences aside. Hajj is Hajj and we have to perform Hajj if we have the money. It is between us and our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not matter who is controlling that place. So, if somebody says that I don't believe in Hajj or Hajj is na'uzu billah, something unnecessary or not a farz, then such a person, they are na'uzu billah saying that that which Allah has said in the Quran is wrong or that which the Prophet ﷺ has explained to us as being one of the five pillars of Islam. I don't believe in one of those pillars. When you remove one of the key pillars of a building, the building comes down. Therefore, such a person should be very worried about their Iman. Are they even a Muslim anymore? It's very hard to say. Then, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uses the word kafara, it also includes, according to the ulama of Asirin, that that person who has the capacity, who has the means and who has everything, and he still chooses to turn away. Because kufr literally means turning away. So, so a person who chooses to turn away, then I will not do hajj. I have the money, I have everything, I have security, I have to, uh, means to provide for the people that I'm leaving behind, the ways are clear and secure, still I'm choosing not to go. Then that person is also included in those people who are under this ayah, woman kafara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who chooses to turn away, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah does not care about people. Allah does not care about those people. Allah is carefree of the whole, all the universes. If the whole universe comes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or chooses to neglect the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not care. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that a person who has all the means and he has that istita'ah, they have the capacity which I explained and still choose not to do hajj, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that Allah does not care about those people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has elaborated that what does not mean, not, what does not caring mean the Prophet ﷺ has said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care in which wilderness do they die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care about them wherever they go, in whatever wilderness they go and die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not even care about their iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care in whatever wilderness they die and on whatever faith they die. They die as a Christian, Allah does not care. They die as a, a Jewish person, Allah does not care. Allah does not, Allah is so angry at such people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So therefore, we should start searching and asking ourselves this question, is Hajj Farz upon us? And are we unnecessarily delaying it? Our job, our part, our responsibility is to try our best. I understand 
that there is things that it, it so happens that we try and we are still not able to go. And that is a different story. Because of certain restrictions, because of certain systems, quotas and stuff, we might not be able to go. And in fact, when we try, start trying, probably it will take two to three years before we are able to go because of the number of the people that are allowed. But we have to show our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are really trying and that we are not delaying it without need. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the realization of this. Ameen, Rabbana Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the best of effects for what we heard and said upon the hearts of the listeners and the speakers. Ameen, Rabbana Alameen. Brothers who have prayed the sunnah, please do so now. Jazakallah khairan. Thank <laughs> you.